The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. And today's webinar is part of our 30-minute series, and it is entitled Chapter Webmasters. So what we're going to be going over today is a lot of the, it's, a, it's an introduction to the Chapter Webmaster function. So the CMS system, the content management system that's within BNI Connect, and how to go in and edit update, maintain uh, your BNI Connect chapter web page. This is, as I said, this is an introductory uh, session, so we're going to be doing a lot of the basics of that functionality for uh, more advanced things. Um, we may hold another webinar on that at a slightly later time. This webinar is being recorded, uh, so you can view it later. It is also a live webinar, so if you're on the webinar with us today, you may ask questions. Uh, there is a questions panel. Uh, please type in your questions, and I'd be happy to answer them as we're going through. Um, or at the end. As I said, it's a 30-minute webinar, meaning we have about 30 minutes of content that we're going to be going over, and then I am happy to stay on the line with you as long as you have additional questions. Um, but for those people that do need to go right at half past, uh, we will end the webinar promptly at that time. So uh, let's talk about the chapter websites. Oh, by the way, uh, it will be posted on our YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global, this is where you'll find all of our webinars. Uh, so take a look up there. There's a ton of different um, topics that are up there from maintaining your profile to building VCP to the online slips program to other copies of this particular webinar. You can also find them on the support site. You go to support.bniconnect.com or click the little question mark that's in BNI Connect and here's our list of upcoming webinars and if you scroll down to the bottom in the training section you'll see the webinars split out by month. And finally, you can also join us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global, where we do webinar announcements and tips and tricks and update reminders and all sorts of things. But let's get back to the chapter websites now. So let me close out these couple of tabs. And every chapter in BNI Connect has their very own web page or a collection of a few pages. This is uh, kind of a mostly a default out of the box website. And you'll see that it has a number of different um, things on the page. So the first thing is over on the left hand side, this is static information or rather it's pulled directly from within BNI Connect. So you can't change this information. The way to change this information is to update the information about the chapter in BNI Connect and it will automatically populate the most current information. The top of the screen, uh, the, the bar up along the top is going to be static. Uh, that is based on BNI branding, so that will all stay there the way it is. But the stuff on the home page is where we're really going to put the most effort into changing things. You can put your own text in there, you can upload your own pictures. Um, again, this one is mostly out of the box with the exception we put our Facebook links at the bottom of this page. All the pages also have chapter members, so this will be a listing of all the members in your chapter. And as you click through to members, they will see their profiles as well. So, for example, this is my chapter. I am a member here in the Rhode Island area. And you can see the uh, person's information. So this is one other reason why people want to be sure to fill out their chapter profiles, because this information is public. It's on the public Internet. Let's take a look as well at another chapter website. So I did a search on Google for a chapter called Mill River BNI, which is in the Massachusetts area. And if we take a look at their webpage, and notice it does come up top of the Google search results here. And if we go to their page, we'll see that they did some more customizations. So they changed the text around in here. They also added a Google map to their chapter. They have their Twitter account that you can follow and they also have their Facebook page listed there. They also turned their other page, which is a chapter gallery, into a chapter news site, so almost a little blog about their page. There's a picture of one of the chapter members. He's the area director now with Dr. Meisner. And again, they have their chapter members as well. So let's take a look. Let's go through and see some of the things that we can edit. I'm going to show you how to edit them, how to put photos on your website, how to change the text. Now, the way to do that is from the inside of BNI Connect. So the first thing you do need to do is to log into BNI Connect. When you do, you'll get to your home screen. The place to edit the chapter websites is under Tools, CMS, 
and then chapter websites. Now, if you have not been made the chapter webmaster yet for your chapter, then you won't see the tools option. Uh, so the way that uh, BNI Connect works with its permissions is your regional office does need to first assign you as the chapter webmaster. Once they do that, the tools button will appear as well as the chapter websites. So if you are missing this, please do contact your chapter director consultant, your executive director, the, the regional office, and they should be able to help you out with this. But assuming you do have it, we're going to go to Tools, CMS, Chapter, Websites. And what we'll see here is all of the websites that you have access to within a region. So let me switch over to Antarctica, which is kind of our test country, just so I'm not messing with anybody's chapters that are there. And I'm going to switch over to Shiver region. And because I'm a system administrator, you'll see that I have access to all of the chapters that we have up in Antarctica. You can see it's a pretty busy place up there. Um, if you are a chapter webmaster for a single chapter, you would only see your particular chapter. And it'll give you the name of the chapter, it'll give you the link to the chapter, and the last time it was modified. To go in and, and, and now edit this site, what we're going to do is click on the Edit button under the Options column. So I'm going to go into the Burr chapter of BNI, and we can see that there's a number of tabs here, and then information about the pages on this front screen. Now let's take a look at the tabs real quick along the top. So the first thing, as I said, is the pages. So these are all the different pages on the chapter site that you have access to make some modifications to. The second tab is called the library. Now what the library is, is in order to put things onto your chapter website, you first need to upload them to the BNI Connect server. That's putting stuff into the library. Now, loading things into the library is pretty straightforward. All you need to do is to take the image that resides on your computer and upload it into the BNI server. The way to do that is to just click the Upload button on the Library tab. So if I click Upload, it's going to pull open a screen that will allow me to search my computer to upload those files. So if I click the magnifying glass, I can now look through my computer to find a picture. So let's take a look at my desktop, and here's an image, here's a graphic that I'm going to upload to the site. It has to be either a PNG file, a JPEG, or a GIF file. So once I click Upload, it only takes a couple of seconds, and that file will now be in our library for our website. If I'd like to upload another one, I just click Upload again, and again, I'm going to search my computer. And let's see if I, I'm going to upload, let's say, this BNI logo. And I click Upload, and now it takes the image from my computer and puts it onto the server. Now, as you're going in to edit your websites, I, rec I, I recommend that you spend a little bit of time getting your library squared away first uh, so that you're not jumping back and forth between the editing screen, going back to the library, going back to the editing screen. Uh, so pick the three, four, five, ten graphics you'd like to get onto your website first and get those into the library. You can also upload documents such as PDF files or Word documents as well as flash objects, and it works the exact same way as it does to upload pictures. So going back, the next tab over is the Site Information tab. Now there's some limited information that you can change on this page as well, and let's show you what that information is. So the very first thing up at the top here tells you what your domain name is. So by default, what's going to happen is it's going to be your regional website name. So in our case in the Antarctic, it's antarcticreferrals.com. And then it's going to put as the folder name or as the, the subdomain for your chapter, it will be the name of the region plus the name of the chapter with dashes in between. So in this case, it's shiver-region-bni-burr-chapter. Now that can be a mouthful if you're trying to direct people to your chapter site. You know, if I had to if I met somebody at a networking event and I said, oh, by the way, yeah, just go to antarcticreferrals.com forward slash shiver dash region dash BNI dash burr chapter. That's kind of a mouthful. You can change this. You can edit this so that it's a little bit more friendly. So let's say instead that I wanted this just to be burr with three R's. I can update it so that I can tell people, hey, by the way, yeah, go check out our chapter website. Go to antarcticreferrals.com forward slash burr. 
and that way it's easier to tell them to get to that site. Now you can use anything you'd like in here. I would check with your director, consultant, or executive director to make sure it's appropriate for your particular region, uh, but as long as it's not being used by another chapter, you can put whatever you'd like in there. Now the second thing on here is the site tagline. We can't change that. That's what's on all of the BNI sites, local business, global network. Uh, if and when the slogan changes for BNI, that will be updated automatically. Um, but we can't change that right now. Now the next three things are the buttons that are on your chapter site. And although you can change these, I would highly recommend talking to your regional office, your executive director, first before you change these. Um, from a branding perspective, um, it's, it's a good thing when all the chapters within a region have similar functionality between them. Um, but let me show you where those are. So I'm just going to copy and paste this link here right up into the browser so that you can see what I'm referring to. And that is these three buttons right here, Regional Website, BNI International, or Members Only. But for example, if your region has decided that they wanted the Members Only button just to say BNI, BNI Connect, and we click Update, we should now see that change on our chapter site. So if I go to the preview site, we can see that this button now says BNI Connect instead of Members Only. And again, you have the ability to change those other buttons as well, but please do check with your regional office first. So let's go back to this other page. And what are all the things that are on this page? So as I said, these are the different pages. And the sub pages or subsections within those pages. Now, your chapter, right now we have only really one page that we can fully edit and maintain, and that is the home page, uh, with the other sub pages below it. Down here, you'll notice that there's two links. There's a preview URL as well as a live URL. Now, when you're working on your chapter web page, you're always making edits to the background copy. There's two copies. There's the preview copy and then there's the live copy. Whenever you're making these edits, it's always making these changes to the back end copy so the rest of the world doesn't see the changes as you're making them. You can only see them in this preview copy. For example, I just made a change to the button, to the BNI Connect button. Looking at the preview site, you can see this change, and you'd also be able to see any other changes we made. But if I go to the live site, which is now antarcticreferrals.com forward slash burr, we would then see, and I haven't published it yet, so it hasn't pulled that in, but if I go to the live site, we will see that it still says member only. Once I publish the site, what that's going to do is take all of those changes that I made to the preview site and apply them to the live site. You can publish as often as you want, and if you may just make a couple of changes, or you can wait until you've made a complete overhaul of your chapter site before you publish. That just depends on your working style. So to make those couple of changes that I made, so for example, changing it to Burr, as well as changing that Members Only button, I need to hit Publish. Now this publish can take anywhere from 10, 15 seconds, in this case it took about five seconds, uh, two, three, four, five minutes, depending on how many graphics and other changes that you made. But now, if I go back to our live URL, this is the live site now, you'll see that the BNI Connect button has changed, and it is going to the right place, so I can tell people antarcticreferrals.com forward slash BRRR for Burr. Okay, so let's take a look at inside this box on the center of the page here. And what you'll see here again, these are the pages, the home page, the chapter members page, and the gallery page. And then you'll see that there's three subsections to the chapter members page, member details, chapter details, and send message. These are all of the pages that we can go in and edit. And at this time, we do not have the ability to add any additional pages. So we just have these pages available to us right now. Next to each one of these pages, you'll see a couple of different options. The first one is Edit Name. So if you don't like the name Home for the Home page, you do have the ability to change that. So maybe instead of Home, you wanted this to be, you know, Welcome to our Chapter. You can change the name of that.
or if you wanted your chapter members page to be, you know, maybe it's our glorious members or something else that you'd like to call it. And that will also change. If I click back on our preview site, you'll notice it also changes the buttons along the top bar here. So we ha now have welcome to our chapter and chapter members. And to get back to our home page, it is now called welcome to our chapter. Now the second option on all of these is the edit meta tags. Now the edit meta tags is really what helps you get found in the search engines. Those are kind of the back end things that the spiders are looking at in order to index you better. Now for this part, meta tags is kind of an advanced thing. It's really an art form coming up with the right keywords that you're going to put in here. I would have a talk with your local regional webmaster or your, your chapter's search engine optimization per person to really get the right things put in here. But it does have the ability to put the meta tags in so that you are found better. Now the final thing on here is the edit content. And this is really the meat and potatoes of what you're going to do with your website. If we click on the edit content button, this is going to open up a new screen. So let me get this screen dragged over from my other monitor here. And what you'll see here is the edit window. Now the edit window has a number of different characteristics. Along the top you'll see this yellow bar that'll have a library button, a preview button, a save button, and a close button. So the library button is what there's two libraries that has the images. So the library images are your library images, the ones that we uploaded before we started editing the site. There is another option here called the common library and that toggles when you click this button. When you're using the common library, that's some branded BNI images that we've uploaded for common use by everybody. To switch back, we can just switch back to your personal library. The preview button will allow you to preview the changes that you've made within this window. The save button obviously saves everything that you uh, have been changing. And the close will take you back to the previous screen. Now you'll notice that over here on the left hand side there's nothing we can do over on this left hand side. That's where the chapter information will populate. Really where we're going to be spending our time is in this middle section that kind of looks like a Word document. And it behaves the same way as a Word document for the most part as well. Now let's take a look all through these buttons and find out what a lot of these buttons do. Again, most of this is like a Word document. You're going to be changing text, you're going to be putting pictures in with a couple of little unique things for a CMS, a content management site. One thing that I'll point out right here, this is one unique thing about the chapter websites, and that is this pound pound TYFCB. Now what that is is your chapter's thank you for closed business in the past 12 months. So once a month, on the first of each month, that number gets updated for the previous 12 months worth of data. So right now in our chapters we're looking at February 2012 through January 2013 for the accumulated uh, thank you for closed business. So as long as that pound pound TYFCB is in there somewhere, it will automatically insert that number into your chapter site. Now if we have any advanced web people on the call today, the first button here is one that you may be interested in and this is the source button. This is what allows you to actually look into the back end coding of the site. If we click the source button you'll notice that everything changes to the coding of the site. So this is all the HTML code. You can edit this directly or in another uh, web design program if you'd like to and paste it back in. By the way, just here's just a hint for you. This is all just straight text. So if you'd like to make a backup copy of your site before you make any changes, a great way to do that would just be to click on the source button, hit control A for select all, copy it, and put this into a notepad document. So if I just drop this into a notepad document and save this, so I'm going to do file save as, and I'm just going to save it on my desktop as default site, I can now make any changes I want and if I completely mess it up I just copy and paste this back into the website 
and it will go back to normal. If you are looking to do advanced things on your site, like to put a Google map in or to um, put the Facebook links in, you will need to do that through the source code. One thing that may not be obvious is that you can also change the header up here. So if you'd like that to say something else, like please come visit our chapter, or something like that, you may put any text you'd like up in this blue bar. All right, so go down into the main focus. Let's take a look at some of these buttons here. Uh, first one is some templates. So right now it's using a template that has the text on the left and the picture on the right. If you would like to use a different template, you can certainly click the Templates button. And you can change, maybe you want the graphic on the left, or maybe just side-by-side -side text, or text in the table. So whatever you'd like to do, you can change the template if you'd like to. So the next couple of buttons, five or six buttons or so, are typical uh, kind of Word document. So if I make some changes in here, and I want to undo them, I can click the Undo button. I could also, of course, hit uh, Control-Z for Undo, and it will undo those changes. And then the Redo button, which will put them back in place. The Cut, Copy, and Paste, traditional functions within any editing software, but the next two you might want to take a look at. And the next two are paste as plain text and paste from Word. If you're grabbing text from another source, such as a Word document or another website, and you're trying to copy and paste it into your website, you may want to use one of these two buttons. Um, and the reason is that it'll try to replicate what was on the other page in this WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. Sometimes when it does that, though, it brings a lot of kind of back-end code with it, and it ends up not looking the way you want it to look. So the best thing to do would be to actually copy it into something like Notepad first and then copy the text in, or to use one of these copy, paste as plain text, or copy from Word options, which will help to alleviate some of those problems. The next few are find and replace. Typical, is, as long, especially when your site starts to get a little bit longer, um, you may need find out that you made a spelling error in 15 different places. You can quickly find and replace those. Uh, select all and remove formatting. Uh, so select all if you need to grab everything that's on your site. Remove formatting will take out all the bold, italics, underlines, and the font size and return it back to the default. The next bunch of buttons have to do with forms. So the forms are really when you're looking, if you're looking to collect information on your website, that's a bit more of an advanced uh, functionality, but the ability does exist to add things like checkboxes and radio buttons and text fields. But I'm not going to get into that today. Uh, we do have a quick question. Uh, Tracy Regan says she cannot seem to get into the webinar other than mute. Um, Thank you for being here, Tracy. Yes, so everybody is muted by default right now. If you do have something that you'd like to um, say out loud, just let me know, and I can unmute your microphone. So, okay, uh, back to here. Uh, so looking at the next couple of buttons here, there's a Maximize button if you'd like to see it in full screen mode. Not very helpful when you're actually designing your website because it messes up the proportions, but very helpful if you're using the source code because you can see a whole lot more. If you'd like to return, just click that button again, and it will bring you back out of there. So the blocks are helpful for showing you all the paragraph markers as you're going along. Uh, superscript and subscript, again, those are if you're putting dates in or something like that, like the first, and you need to make ST have a superscript, you can do that with this button. The next couple of buttons here are all the traditional word functions, bold, italic, underline. You can have strike through. Uh, which are which is helpful if you're doing something like a list that has dates on it, so you can cross them out and people will still know that you had those events. You can do numbering and bullet points. And bullet points as well. Uh, you can increase and decrease the indentation, so it lines up the way you'd like it to. Or put in a block quote so that you can have it separated out in its entirety. Left, center, right, and full justification. 
So these next set of functions are really what you're going to be helping you with when it comes to a website. If you'd like to link things, that's what these two buttons for, link and unlink. So let's say that search our members. Let's say that you'd like that to bring up a, a separate website or bring you to a different part of the web page. What you would want to do is link that. And to do that is what this link button is for. So the first thing to do is to highlight some text and then click the link button. Now let's say I'd like search our members to come up to, you know, maybe I just want that to bring up Google. You would type the website in that you'd like it to go to and click OK. And you'll notice that this now becomes underlined. When people click on that, it will open up the, the Google page for them to do that. Another helpful link to do is, let's say that you wanted people to be able to email you. You could click Email Us. And another type of link that you could put in is a mail link. Now, what this will do is it will open up their own email program, and it will allow them to send an email to whatever email address you specify. You could even put in a helpful subject in the starter of a message body. Now, putting pictures on your site, that's probably one of the first things you're going to want to do. To do that, again, you have to have the things uploaded into your library, and then you're going to click this Image button. When you click the Image button, it will ask you to browse the server, and that is going to go into your library to find the images that you uploaded. Now, you'll notice some stock imagery is already up there, but then it also has the two images that I put up, this BNI logo, as well as this uh, new money advertisement. So I can put that in there. I can change, let's say, by default, it's going to be 934 uh, pixels wide. Maybe I only want that to be about 400. I click OK, and you'll notice that it puts it into our site. Now, you can also link images. Let's say I wanted this to bring it to a page for, the, for an image. I could click this Link button again, and I can attach this so that when they click on the picture, it brings them to a specific website as well. And the same thing is true for flash objects and or documents that you may have uploaded to your library. Now, tables are extremely helpful. If you would like to put a table in, this can also help you to keep your images spaced out properly on the screen. So you can put a table in there for just about anything you'd like to. And again, if you'd like to line up images, you can just click on the Image button and insert images into a table. You can also put lines if you really, really need to or want to. There is the option to put various smiley faces and different symbols. So this is great for if you need the copyright symbol or the registered trademark symbol. This is where you would find those symbols. And of course, we have styles, different fonts, sizes of fonts text color, and you can highlight things as well. Now, once you've made all of your changes, you do want to be sure to save your changes. So if you click Save, it will immediately bring you to the preview screen so you can see what this is going to look like with all of the changes that you put there. And once you're done, just hit Close. Now, again, this is going to show up on our preview site. So if I click our preview site, you will see all of these changes that I made. But if I click on the live site, those changes aren't there yet. This is what the site looks like to the rest of the world right now. In order to get my changes to the live site so that everybody can see what I see, I would click this Publish button. And as soon as this screen refreshes, we should be able to go to our live site and see all of these wonderful changes that we put up there.
So those are the basics of a chapter website. We are nearing the bottom of the hour right now, and I would like to thank everybody for being here today that has to leave right at the bottom of the hour. Again, I will stay and answer questions as long as people have questions. Uh, but for those of you that do need to drop off right at the bottom of the hour, I'd like to thank you for your time here today. Uh, just a reminder, the full copy of this, including questions, will be uh, recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel. It will also be available via link on our support site, support.bn iConnect.com, or again, just click this little question mark here in BNI Connect, and it will bring you to our support site. And down here in the training section, you'll see the webinars for each month that have been uploaded and compiled there for you as well. Again, YouTube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. Also, join us on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. And I'd love for you to connect with me, Jeremy Walsh. Do a search for me here in BNI Connect. Okay, so let's tackle some of these questions uh, that we have. We do have um, a couple of questions up here. So we have a question uh, from Perry. She says, I had difficulty getting connected to the beginning of the webinar. How do I get to the edit tool for the website? So to get to the edit tool, uh, you would go to Tools, CMS, and then Chapter Websites and that will bring you to these page these pages now if you don't have the tools button or the tools section you will need to talk to your chapter director consultant or your executive director and they will be able to assign these permissions they have to assign you as the chapter webmaster in order for you to have access to that okay does that help perry and from tracy um, how do I start this process? Our chapter doesn't have a website that I know of. Every chapter in BNI Connect, so every all of the 6,000 or so chapters or 5,500 chapters that are in BNI that are on BNI Connect, every single chapter has a website. However, it may not be updated. So it's just going to have the stock default website, um, just the basic image, the basic text. Um, but we do give you the ability to edit it. But again, talk to your regional office, and they will uh, be able to. So uh, Tracy also follows up. We don't have a webmaster. I am the chapter president. Can I be the webmaster? Again, that's a regional decision. Uh, so as you can see here today, it, you know, if you can edit a Word document, you can do the basics of managing your chapter website. So we have some chapters that put up, hey, here's what happened in our meeting this week, and they have a meeting recap on that page. So that's a great use for a chapter website that a president would be great for doing that particular function. But again, you do need to talk to your regional office, chapter director, consultant, executive director, in order to uh, do that. So Tracy, what, what region are you in? Uh, where are you? So the way to, the way to do it, you're in, uh, okay, South Count. Uh, South Carolina, Georgia. So if you go to your regional website, which is going to be BNISCGA.com, okay, go to find a chapter. And what chapter are you in, Tracy? And I'm going to look up all the chapters. You're in the ESPN chapter. Is that short for something? Is it Eastside Professional Network here? There we go. So this is this is the first part of the chapter page, and then you'll see right here it says Visit Chapter Website. So if I click on Visit Chapter Website, this is the stock default chapter website. So this is your chapter website right now. And again, if I look at chapter members, it will list all of your chapter members, including yourself here. So in order to get this information updated, again, you have to become a chapter webmaster, and then you can start updating all of those, uh, those pieces of information. Okay? Does that help, Tracy? All right. Salvig has a question. Salvig is joining us from South Africa, by the way. We are a global organization, and South Africa is on BNI Connect. And she says, what is Flash? Uh, so Flash is... It's basically a programming technology that allows you to do things like video and or animated graphics on the page. 
um, but it has basically its own special encapsulated code. So it's kind of like updating, a, uploading a picture, but it's it's a file that would display these graphics, or they can even Flash has games and all sorts of things, all within uh, this one small module. But you can upload Flash objects. I'm not sure if that really answered your question, Salvik. All right, does anybody else have any questions uh, whatsoever? Happy to, as I said, I'm happy to stay on these calls as long as people have questions, uh, but we have reached our last question. So, excellent. If I've answered everybody's questions, again, I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. Um, Sabe says, can you upload YouTube videos? And as a matter of fact, you can put YouTube videos on the sites. And for example, um, I oftentimes will put um, the YouTube videos for these types of trainings on certain sites, especially regional sites. And yes, you can put YouTube videos, but you do. there is an advanced method for doing that. Um, let me show you guys how to do that. Here's a little bonus for you. So let's say that I went to YouTube. I'm going to go to our YouTube channel, actually, BNI Connect Global. Now let's say that I wanted to put the online slips and referral tracking tutorial on our website so that I could get our chapter to, to do more of this. Here's what I do. I would go to the YouTube video. Now most YouTube videos will allow you to share them. So if I click on the share button here, you'll notice it gives you a link. This is not what you want. This is just a link to the site. I mean, you could just direct them to the site, but let's say that you would like to actually put the video into the site. Click on the embed button, and what this does is it gives you a bunch of code. What you need is to copy this code. What that'll do is put, just like this player is here with the video, it'll put that into the website for you. So I'm going to copy this and go back to our chapter site here. Now, let's say I want to put that right onto our home page. I'm going to click on Edit Content. Now for this, you absolutely have to do this in the source code. So I'm going to click on the source code. Now here's another little hint. Let's say that I want this to appear right uh, you know, here, for example. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a marker in there. This is where I want it to go in the source code. So I'm going to click source and I'm going to find that XXXX in the text here somewhere. So here it is here. And I'm going to take this and then I'm going to paste, control V to paste, that iframe code into the source code here. Now when I switch back, you'll see this iframe where I pasted it. So that's the placeholder for this YouTube video that I put on here. Now if I save this, now you will see a YouTube video on my chapter website. If I close this and publish it, and I go to our live site here, you will see the YouTube video that people can play and watch directly from the website. Does that answer your question there, Salveg? And Salveg, knowing that you're a national director, that works the same exact way on the regional websites. And Tracy asks, so who do I need to contact? You need to contact your chapter director consultant or your regional office, your executive director, to get those permissions. So Zurian Bennett asks, uh, I'm in a chapter in Virginia, uh, the mighty Montclair chapter in Northern Virginia. So if you're in Northern Virginia, um, you guys are, I believe, one of the very, very few regions in the United States that is not yet on BNI Connect. Um, so I'm pretty sure, let me just do a Google search for you guys here, uh, mighty Montclair chapter BNI. Yep, you guys, you're part of BNI Northern Virginia, and again, you guys are on a on a system called BNI Web. Notice that this has a different heading up here. So, uh, unfortunately, until your region switches over to BNI Connect, which we're hoping happens sometime later in the year, um, 
they have their own system. So I hope that helps there, Zorian. Sorry about that. All right, do we have any other questions? Happy to answer any questions. Excellent. Again, this will be posted on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. Find us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global, BNI Connect on Twitter. My name is Jeremy Walsh. If you felt that this was a good use of your time, if you got some good information out of this, a good referral for me is to please go back to your chapters and let them know about these webinars. So we have a whole series of webinars. Uh, we would love to see them on any of our webinars to see that schedule. Go to your regional website calendar or click on the question mark in BNI Connect and you'll see the webinars. Our next webinar coming up is on the social media aspects of BNI Connect and that is on Wednesday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about giving testimonials and um, how to find people in BNI Connect, how to get found in BNI Connect, and how to use the social media groups in BNI Connect. So again, thank you everyone for being here and I look forward to seeing you again on a future webinar. Happy connecting everyone.